Greetings, everybody. Chaplain Bob Walker here. Light of the World Ministries, John 8, 12. Jesus says, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. This Bible study is going to be on the stranger. Sometimes when the Bible talks about the stranger, they're talking about divorced Israel. So, get your King James Bible and throw away your modern Bibles. I know what they tell you about the modern Bibles. Oh, they're from better, older uh, manuscripts and scholars. Actually, when you find out that the largest publisher of religious books in the world, Zondervan, is owned by Harper Collins. Harper Collins prints *The Joy of Gay Sex*, a pictorial how-to manual. Uh, I've never read it, but uh, I've seen the advertisements. And they also print *The Satanic Bible* by the Church of Satan. Yeah, so yeah, we should uh, throw away the King James and uh, use modern Bibles like the NIV, right? Which is part of Zondervan. Uh, so Zondervan is owned by HarperCollins. HarperCollins is owned by the News Corp, which you know the News Corp by Fox TV. Yeah. And they're the ones telling you that the older manuscripts are better. Yeah. You know why they hate the King James so much? Uh, well, let's take a look real quick. Well, let's go to Deuteronomy 18 and verse 10. There shall not be found among you. In other words, don't let them live with you. Or maybe don't let them live. Yeah, don't, don't let them live among you. There shall not be found among you anyone that maketh his son or his daughter to pass through the fire, child sacrifice, or that useth divination, or an observer of times, or an enchanter, or a witch. So, what do they mean by that? Hmm. Exodus twenty two eighteen. Thou shalt not suffer or allow. Thou shalt not suffer a witch to live. Well, what a, you know, a Satanist. Yeah. Huh. Now are you, you start to understand why they hate the King James so much. You want a second witness why they hate the King James? Leviticus 18.22. Thou shalt not, N-O-T, thou shalt not lie with mankind as with womankind. It is abomination. And if you don't know what an abomination is, it is a sin that God especially hates. I mean, God hates all sin. But this is the one that he really hates. Matter of fact, every abomination... Witchcraft is in that category, too. Every single time an abomination is mentioned, uh, God wants the abomination to be done away with, if you catch my drift. Uh, how about a second witness? Leviticus chapter 20 and verse 13. If a man also lie... And we're not talking about not telling the truth. If a man also lie with mankind, as he lieth with a woman, both of them have committed an abomination. They shall surely be put to death. Their blood shall be upon them. In other words, uh, their guilt is on them. You're guiltless for getting rid of the abominations, the two of them, 
you're you're sin you're sin you're sinless they shall surely be put to death their blood shall be upon them yeah so this is why they hate the king james they know what it says the modern versions change this matter of fact the niv for an example says instead of saying a uh, sodomite says temple prostitute i mean what is a temple prostitute is that a male is that a female is it okay to do something at the temple as long as you don't pay or is it okay to do it if you uh you know don't charge or is it okay to charge for services as long as it's not at the temple i mean what is a temple prostitute you know uh and the bible tells you exactly what a sodomite is so all right so who is the stranger in the bible well guess what i was on my way to work and when i'm on the interstate i it takes me about 30 minutes to get to work i uh, listen to the alexander scorby s-c-o-u-r-b-y uh king james bible on audio and i was you know I, you could, I could spend 30 minutes a day uh, on the way to work and 30 minutes a day on the way back from work listening to the Bible on audio. And, and I've read this many times and I've listened to it many times, but this time it stuck. Who is the stranger? Well, sometimes, not always. Um, so let's read Obadiah chapter 1 and we're going to have to stop and to find some things here. Obadiah chapter 1 and verse 1. And oh, by the way, Obadiah is one of the minor prophets. Uh, they call them minor because of their size, not because of their importance. I mean, there's a lot of messianic prophecies pointing to Jesus in I think it's Zechariah. I always get Zechariah and Zephaniah mixed up. Uh, one of them, one of the books, covers what I believe is the coming nuclear war, and then the other one tells us a bunch of prophecies about Christ, uh, about him having the prince nail prints in his hands and being sold for 30 pieces of silver and yeah but minor prophets uh, I, I very very few preachers pastors whatever you want to call them will even bother with the minor prophets very few i mean it's sad they're they're packed full of knowledge you know uh, and then they want to the only one that they really preach on is Jonah, and then they turn that into a children's tale. Actually, Jonah, the book of Jonah is a very, very important book. You know, they, oh, he got swallowed by the whale. You know, they make it a children's story, but no. All right, so Obadiah, Minor Prophets, chapter 1 and verse 1. Let's, let's do it. All right, so with that out of the way, Obadiah chapter 1 and verse 1. The vision of Obadiah. Thus saith the Lord God concerning Edom. Edom, Edom. Where have I heard that word before? Oh, yeah, it's in the Bible. Let's take a look at Edom. You know, another reason why they hate the King James Bible is... Uh, when you have a King James Bible, and for example, suppose you go to a, an online Bible lookup, or you get a concordance, like a Strong's Concordance, you look up a word, and usually 
the well maybe not usually but oftentimes the first time that word appears it's explained in the context of the scriptures so let's take a look where's the first appearance of Edom in the Bible Oh, okay, yeah, it's right here in Genesis 25, 25 and verse 30. And Esau, who was Esau? Esau was the brother of Jacob, who God named, uh, renamed Israel. And Esau said to Jacob, Feed me, I pray thee, with that same red pottage, for I am faint. Therefore was his name called Edom. Edom has reference to red. Uh, have you ever heard communists called reds? You ever seen a communist, the old Soviet hammer and sickle flag? It's red. Um, in Revelation chapter 12, uh, there appeared a great red dragon. Boy, I could do a whole study on just red, huh? Yeah. You know, there's a reason why communists are called the left. And then Christianity is called the right. And uh, God says he's going to separate the goats on the left and the sheep on the right. And those on the left are going to a place where they're never going to need a sweater for being cold. Trust me. So... Uh, Esau. Let's take a look at Esau. All right. In uh, Genesis 36, 8, Thus dwelt Esau in Mount Seir. Esau is Edom. So, mm. Oh, okay. We're going to have to do all right, go to Genesis chapter 25. Uh, okay, Genesis 25 and verse 19. Forgive me, sometimes uh, I just kind of throw these things together and it takes me sometimes a minute or two to figure out where to start and where to end. Uh, okay, Genesis 25 and verse 19. These and these are the generations. Isn't it interesting? The first four letters of generations is G-E-N-E. -E, gene, as in genetics, as in DNA. And these are the generations of Isaac, Abraham's son. Abraham begot Isaac. I have an entire playlist on YouTube on God's covenant with Abraham. Very important. I mean, the Jews claim Abraham as their father. The Arabs claim Abraham as their father. And if Christians had half a brain, they would too. But most of them don't have half a brain. They're totally ignorant of what the Bible says. Absolutely terrible. The average churchgoer that claims to be a Christian, they can't even name 10 books in the Bible. I mean, I've, done, I've asked them, ah, can you name 10 books in the Bible? If you can't even name 10 books in the Bible, I know you haven't read them. Well, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. John 3, 16. You know, that, that's proof that God loves everybody. Uh, no. No, God hated Esau. Hated him. Yeah. All right, so. And these are the generations of Isaac, Abraham's son, Abraham begat Isaac. And Isaac was 40 years old when he took Rebekah to wife, the daughter of Bethuel, the Syrian, 
uh, Padanaram, the sister to Laban the Syrian. And Isaac entreated the Lord for his wife because she was barren. And the Lord was entreated of him, and Rebekah his wife conceived. Hmm. And the children struggled together within her. Boy, can you imagine having a, a Saturday night wrestling show inside your belly, ladies? <laughs> I, I don't even want to think about it. And the children struggled together within her, and she said, If it be so, why am I thus? Uh, I guess the modern thing is, what in the world is going on inside my belly? And she went to inquire of the Lord. So she's going to go to the Lord and say, hey, hey, uh, Lord, what in the world is going on? What's up with these kids? They're driving me crazy. Well, that's the Bob translation. Yeah. 23. And the Lord said to her, two nations. Do you know that word nation? Nations is the same word that they translate as Gentiles. Yeah. Same word. Sometimes the Bible translates it as Gentiles. Sometimes as nations, depending upon the context. And I've had people tell me, oh, that's a mistranslation in the King James Bible. No, it's not. No. The Bible declares the wicked would not understand, but the righteous would understand. It's up to you to grab a shovel and dig. You want to learn what the Bible says? Open it and read it. Dust it off, open it, and read it, or get it on uh, MP3 or cassette or CD or whatever they got anymore. Um, I don't like to have eight tracks anymore, but uh, or cassettes. God, Bob, you must be getting old. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm there. I'm there. But uh, yeah. Listen to the Bible on cassette. Well, I'm sorry. <laughs> MP3. Yeah, that's what I do. So. And the Lord said unto her, Two nations are in thy womb, and two manner of people, two different kinds of people. They're not going to be the same. She's got twins. But they ain't going to be the same. Two nations are in thy womb, and two manner of people shall be separated from thy bowels. And the one people shall be stronger than the other, and the elder shall serve the younger. And when her days to be delivered were fulfilled, behold, there were twins in her womb, and the first came out red, and the first came out red all over like an hairy garment, and they called his name Esau. And after that, his brother came out, and his hand took hold on Esau's heel, and his name was called Jacob. Jacob's name was changed to Israel. Keep that in mind. We're going to, we're going to, we're going to go over that, I'm sure. So, And Isaac was three score years old when she bare them. You know, Isaac was 60 when he had his kids. Wow. And the boys grew, and Esau was a cunning hunter, a man of the field, and Jacob was a plain man dwelling in tents. So it turns out, I guess Esau was the... the uh, one that put the meat on the table, hunting, hunting, and Jacob was the uh, the gardener, the farmer. And Isaac loved Esau because he did eat of his venison. Venison is deer, people. For those of you that aren't familiar with it, um, I've had venison cooked right. Man, I tell you, it's it's great. 
Oof. And Isaac loved Esau because he did eat of his venison, but Rebecca, his wife, but Rebecca loved Jacob. Um, boy, I don't know how much of this I should keep reading, but I could turn this into an hour's study. Um, I have an entire Bible study on the life of Esau. And it's called, Why Did God Hate Esau? Yeah, you heard me. God hated Esau. Because actually, Esau hated God. And maybe God was just returning the favor. I don't know. Um, and how can he hate somebody before they're even born? You know, you wonder if the Lord created the souls. Then I'm not saying this is true. This is just an idea I'm throwing out because I can't think of any other way. But maybe we existed in some spiritual soul type form before we were born and Esau was a piece of garbage even before he was born I don't know I don't know I mean it's I can't I don't know or maybe the Lord knows the future and sees what a piece of garbage he is and says I don't know We'll take a look. So Genesis 25, 28. And Isaac loved Esau because he did eat of his venison, but Rebekah loved Jacob. And J Jacob sawed pottage, and Esau came to the field, and he was faint. Um, what do you... Um, do you know what vegetarian... The, the definition of vegetarian is, it's an old Indian word. It means a lousy hunter. Yeah. So, um, so Esau's coming from the field, and he's hungry. He's tired. Maybe cold. I don't know. And Esau said to Jacob, Feed me, I pray thee, with the same red pottage. Now, I'm thinking this red pottage is red lentils. That's what a lot of people think. Um, uh, feed me, I pray thee, with that same red pottage, for I am faint. Therefore was his name called Edom. You know, God never said not one good thing about the Edomites. And Jacob said, sell me this day thy birthright. Now, if you don't know it, the firstborn child was given a double portion of parents goods per the Lord for being the birthright because it was the elders child's responsibility son to take care of the parents until their old age that was their responsibility so they were to get a double inheritance and so, you know, and this was a gift from God. Now, that's in the book of the law. I don't know. I don't remember if it's in Leviticus or Numbers or Deuteronomy. I don't know. But it's in there about the birthright. I mean, you could do a whole Bible study on the birthright. So, And Esau said to Jacob, Feed me, I pray thee, with the same red pottage, for I am faint. Therefore was his name called Edom. We're going we're gonna to take a look at Edom in a little bit. And Jacob said, Sell me this day thy birthright. All right, I tell you what. Give me your birthright blessing, and I'll give you some uh, red lentils. 32. And Esau said, Behold, I am at the point to die. Man, my, be my belly's grumbling and hurting because I'm hungry, dude. I wasn't able to get any deer, you know, so. Uh, that's kind of the Bob translation, so. And Esau said, Behold, I'm at the point to die. And what profit, what good, and what profit shall this birthright do to me? 
You know, what good is this birthright? You know, what good is it? Here it is. A gift from God. And Esau says, what good is this? You know, verse 33. And Jacob said, swear to me this day. And he swore unto him and he sold his birthright unto Jacob. Wow. So here it is. God gave Esau a gift, the double portion, the birthright. And Esau could care less. I'd rather have a bowl of those beans over there than my birthright. You know, a gift from God. Can you imagine God wants to give you a gift and you don't want it? And Jacob said, Swear to me this day, and he swore unto him, and he sold his birthright unto Jacob. Then Jacob gave Esau bread and pottage of lentils. And he did eat and drink and rose up and went his way. Thus Esau despised his birthright. Wow. Now, if you doubt that God hated Esau, Malachi chapter 1 and verse 3. The Lord says, And I hated Esau. And if you listen to the modern versions uh, and your modern so-called scholars, they'll say, Well, you know, God doesn't hate Esau. He just loves him a little bit less than Jacob. But my King James says hated. And it's the same word in the book of Psalms where God says he hates liars, he hates murderers, he hates those that do evil. Maybe he just loves murderers just a little bit less than people that love him. That's what they want you to think. And I hated Esau and laid his mountains and his heritage waste for the dragons, the dragons, the dragons of the wilderness. Wow. Dragons, huh? Why, why is... Wow. Dragons of the wilderness. Whoa. Whoa, whoa, whoa. That's, that's some crazy stuff, huh? Um, all right, so let's take a look at something. Revelation 12, 3. And there appeared in, uh, another wonder in heaven, and behold, a great red dragon. A great red dragon. Why not blue or green? No, red. Having seven heads and ten horns and seven crowns upon his heads. Um, let's skip down to verse 7. And there was war in heaven. War in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon. And the dragon fought in his angels and prevailed not. Neither was their place found any more in heaven. And the great dragon, the great red dragon, right? The great dragon was cast out. That old serpent called... Drum roll, please. Called the devil and Satan. So this old serpent, the great dragon, the great red dragon is called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth and his angels were cast out with him. So does that make sense now with uh, Malachi? Malachi 1.3, And I hated Esau and laid his mountains and his heritage waste for the dragons of the wilderness? Does that make sense now? And by the way, um, let's see. Hold on. All right, what is, what is his heritage? So we find out that heritage, well, let's let the Bible explain the Bible. And this only works with the King James. You can't do this with the modern Bibles. They change the words so that you don't make the connection. So go to Psalms 127 and verse 3. 
low children children are an heritage of the Lord Wow children are an heritage of the Lord and the fruit of the womb is his reward children are a reward of the Lord so does that make sense now in Malachi 1 verse 3 God says I hated Esau and laid his mountains and his heritage his children waste for the dragons of the wilderness oh wait why would the Lord curse his children why oh wait a minute guess what Esau married Canaanite women and almost nobody anymore preaches or teaches that the Canaanites were the children of the fallen angels I got an entire playlist on that if anybody's interested uh, you know that's why God says he's going to absolutely destroy the Canaanites now and I know in Matthew 10 4 they'll tell you well Simon was a Canaanite uh, was he a Canaanite by DNA blood or was he called a Canaanite because he lived in the land of Canaan Jesus was called a Sumerian because he lived in Galilee he was called Jesus of Nazareth he was called Jesus the Galilean but he was born in Bethlehem Bethlehem is not Galilee or well maybe it is I'm not sure I'd have to look it up but but uh, he you know was Jesus from Nazareth or Beth or uh, Bethlehem you know he was born in Bethlehem but he lived in uh, Nazareth for a while you know uh, you know in Galilee in Samaria so what is it you know you move you move to Texas you're you know are you a Texan if you move to Florida are you a Floridian if you move to California are you a Californian or an idiot you know I don't know all right so let's take a look uh, Canaanite Zechariah Z E C H A R I A H I always get Zechariah and Zephaniah mixed up I I don't know Zechariah 14 21 another minor prophet yea every pot in Jerusalem and in Judah shall be holiness holiness unto the Lord of hosts and all they that sacrifice shall come and take of them and see therein and in that day there shall be no more no more the Canaanite in the house of the Lord of hosts Wow no more Canaanites uh, but if you wanted to prove that the Canaanites were the children of the fallen angels you would have to spend about 12 hours and you'd be convinced beyond the shadow of a doubt and most churchgoers you know they want to go to church for about 30 45 minutes read a couple Bible verses listen to the pastor talk about uh, his golf game and tell a couple of jokes and tell everybody about uh, you know pass around the collection plate this one's for the uh, the building fund uh, and this this uh, collection plate is for the uh, evangelist over in Africa fund and this one's for the I don't know the homeless fund and then this one's for the you know pastors <clears throat> excuse me the pastors Cadillac fund yeah you get the idea so let's read Malachi chapter 1 and verse 2 uh, I skipped to verse 3 because I missed this so I have loved you saith the Lord yet ye say wherein hast thou loved us was not Esau Jacob's brother saith the Lord yet I love Jacob and I hated Esau and laid his mountains and his heritage waste for the dragons of the wilderness 
Romans 9.13. How about a New Testament confirmation? As it is written, Jacob have I loved, but Esau have I hated. Wow. Let's go to the look. Let's go take a look at the book of Hebrews, chapter 12. Oh, let's start in verse 15, or 14. Hebrews 12, 14. Follow peace with all men in holiness, without which no man shall see the Lord. So the Lord loves peace and holiness, right? Looking diligently, lest any man fail of the grace of God, lest any root of bitterness springing up trouble you, and therefore, uh, I'm sorry, and thereby many be defiled. You know, we shouldn't be bitter about our lot in life. My dad always told me, he says, Bob, of everybody I've ever known in my entire life, he says, you have the worst luck of anybody I have ever known. You wouldn't believe how many doors I've had slammed in my face. And um, I realize now, it was the Lord slamming them doors. There was a time I was trying to chase a career, make money, and do this and that, and nope, never happened. I've had so many, so many things like that. Nope, Lord's like, nope, don't want you doing that. Nope, don't want you doing that. I just unbelievable. So, am I bitter about it? No. I'm just hoping now I'm doing what the Lord wants wants me to do. So, lest any root of bitterness springing up trouble you and thereby many be defiled, lest there be any fornicator. Now remember, Esau was married to his Canaanite wives, but he's called a fornicator. Lest there be any fornicator or profane person as Esau, who for one morsel of meat sold his birthright. For ye know how that afterward, when he would have inherited the blessing, he was rejected. Who rejected him? God rejected Esau. He was rejected, for he found no place of repentance, though he sought it carefully with tears. Oh yeah, crocodile tears. You know? Yeah. Can you imagine that? Esau is called a fornicator, a profane person, he was rejected. God rejected him. He hated him. God hated Esau, and Esau hated God's blessing. Wow. And I go into this a lot more deeper in my Esau study. And God's going to destroy all of Esau's children. They're gone. And I think today that you could locate Esau's children because they call themselves Reds. Yeah. All right, let's go back to Obadiah chapter one. I think we got a, I hope I've laid a foundation for you to realize who Esau was. Matter of fact, uh, and you got to realize something. Esau could claim to be the children of Abraham because they were. He was Abraham's grandson. Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. You know? Yeah. And, oh, and Jacob. Oh, oh, amen. I need to do something with Jacob. I need to prove to you that Jacob is Israel. Now remember, Esau and Jacob are brothers. Now, in uh, Genesis chapter 32, you can read about Jacob wrestling with an angel. Um, 
And in verse 27, and he, the angel, and he said unto him, what is thy name? And he said, Jacob, you know, yeah, like he doesn't know who he is, right? Uh, you know, when you're in a court of law, a lawyer, a good lawyer is going to ask you questions, but he already knows the answer, but he's doing this to, so that you're telling the jury the truth here. Uh, what is your name? Oh, I know what your name is, but I want you to tell everybody else, right? What is thy name? And he said, Jacob. And he said, thy name shall be called no more Jacob, but Israel. Now, remember the last Bible study I did uh, with the EL has reference to God? Oh, yeah. Thy name shall be called no more Jacob, but Israel. For as a prince, thou hast power with God. Thou hast power with God. He's telling you what this, this mean, Israel means. A prince that has power with God and with men and has prevailed. Wow. Think about it. So Jacob's name was changed to Israel. And Israel had 12 sons who were the 12 tribes. All right. So let's go back to Jerah, Obadiah chapter 1. And you know, I did a Bible commentary on Obadiah chapter 1, but I'm not sure I I'm not sure I covered this material, a lot of it, some of it. Some of it I did, some of it, you know. It's kind of new. All right, Obadiah chapter 1. The vision of Obadiah, thus saith the Lord God concerning Edom. Now we covered what Edom is. We have heard a rumor from the Lord a rumor from the Lord. And an ambassador is sent among the heathen. Arise ye, and let us rise up against her in battle. So the ambassador is sent among the heathen and saying, Arise ye, and let us go uh, rise up against her in battle. So is the Lord going to battle against the heathen? I think so. Verse 2. Behold, I have made thee small among the heathen. Who are we talking about here? Esau, Edom. It tells you right there in the first sentence. Thus saith the Lord God concerning Edom. Boom! We're talking about Edom here. Behold, I have made thee small among the heathen. Is there a group of heathens, non-Christians, antichrists, that are small in number? Uh, wait a minute, Bob. What do you mean by antichrist? Oh, okay. That's a good question. I'm glad you asked that. I'm glad you asked. What is an antichrist? Well, let's have the Bible interpret the Bible. That's always the best thing to use, right? And the King James does it, seems like every time. Really. What's an Antichrist, Bob? 1 John chapter 2, verse 22. Who is a liar? This is, it's kind of, that's like, kind of like a question. Who's a liar? Well, here's the answer. But he that denieth that Jesus is the Christ. Anybody that denies that Jesus is the Christ or the Messiah is a liar. So who is a liar? But he that denieth that Jesus is the Christ, he is antichrist that denieth the Father and the Son. What group of people deny that Jesus is the Christ? Well, they meet in the sin of gogs every Friday night and yeah and uh, if they believed in Jesus then they would be Christians wouldn't they oh absolutely 
There's no such thing as a messianic you-know-what. Uh, I don't believe it. So, who is a liar but he that denieth that Jesus is the Christ? He is Antichrist that denieth the Father and the Son. Whosoever denieth the Son, the same hath not the Father. But he that acknowledgeth the Son hath the Father also. Because if you deny the Son, you got to deny the Father that was the one that sent the Son. Right? And in 1 Corinthians 16, 22, it says, If any man love not, if any man love not the Lord Jesus Christ, let him be anathema, maranatha. That means cursed. You don't love the Lord Jesus Christ, you're cursed. Is there a group of people that do not love the Lord Jesus Christ? Yeah. Obadiah chapter 1 verse 2. Behold, I have made thee small among the heathen. Thou art greatly despised. Is there a small group of people that are heathens and antichrists that are greatly despised in this world? Maybe they've been kicked out over, uh, kicked out of over a hundred different countries and places. Uh, yeah, but it's always somebody else's fault, never theirs, right? All right, let's read verse three, chapter. I'm um, yeah, verse three. All right, verse three. The pride of thine heart hath deceived thee. So this small group of heathens that are greatly despised are full of pride. We be the children of Abraham. Thou that dwellest in the cleft of the rocks, whose habitation is high, that saith in his heart, Who shall bring me down to the ground? Though thou exalt thyself as the eagle, and though thou set thy nest among the stars, thence will I bring thee down, saith the Lord. If thieves came to thee by night, I'm sorry, if thieves came to thee, if robbers by night, how art thou cut off? Would they not have stolen till they had enough? If the grape gatherers came to thee, would they not leave some grapes? How are the things of Esau searched out? Esau. Verse 1, they were talking about Esau. Verse 6, they're still talking about Esau. How are the things of Esau searched out? How are his hidden things sought out? Now, you should know something. When Israel left Egypt in the Exodus under Moses, they asked Esau, the nation, the Edomites, they asked them for safe passage through their land. And they said, no. You go through our land, we're going to attack you. How's that for brotherly love? Huh? Huh? Uh, maybe we should take a look real quick. All right, let's go to Numbers chapter, uh, Numbers 20. Uh, verse 14. And Moses, now remember, Moses led Israel out of Egypt. And they're trying to go to the promised land, Israel. And Moses sent messengers from Kadesh unto the king of Edom. Thus saith thy brother Israel. So here it is. He's, he's, Edom and Israel are brothers. Thus saith thy brother Israel. Thou knowest all the travail that hath befallen us. Travail is trouble. Verse 15. How our fathers went down into Egypt, and we have dwelt in Egypt a long time, and the Egyptians vexed us and our fathers. And when we cried to the Lord, 
he heard our voice and sent an angel and hath brought us forth out of Egypt. And behold, we are in Kadesh, Kadesh, a city in the uttermost of thy border. Let us pass, I pray thee, through thy country. We will not pass through the fields or through the vineyards, neither will we drink of the water of the wells. We will go by the king's highway. We will not turn to the right hand nor to the left until we have passed thy borders. And Edom said unto him, Thou shalt not pass by me. Nope, you guys are not allowed to go through our land. Thou shalt not pass by me, lest I come out against thee with the sword. Yeah, you try to go through our land, we're going to come against you with uh, the sword. We're going to fight you. How's that for brotherly love? 19. And the children of Israel said unto him, We will go by the highway, and if I and my cattle drink of thy water, then I will pay for it. I will only, without doing anything else, go through on my feet. And he said, Edom. And he, Edom, said, Thou shalt not go through. And Edom came out against him with much people and with a strong hand. So he sent an army against him. Think about it. Wow. Thus Edom refused to give Israel passage through his border, whereby Israel turned away from him. How's that for brotherly love? And you wonder why God hates this Israel. Um, why God... Uh, uh, no, God doesn't hate Israel. God hates Edom. And Edom can easily claim to be Israel. Edom can claim to be Abraham. Wow. Yeah. Jesus had fun with these people. I'm being sarcastic and mocking when I say fun. John chapter 8. Uh, let's see, where are we going to start here? Abraham, uh, John chapter 8, verse 31. Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him, If ye continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Verse 33, they answered him, we be Abraham's seed and were never in bondage to any man. How sayest thou, ye shall be made free? Hmm. So here it is. They say they're Abraham's seed and were never in bondage to any man. How can they be Abraham's children? And yet they were never in bondage in Egypt because they were Esau Edom, the people that God hate, hated. Does that make sense to you now? We be Abraham's seed and were never in bondage to any man. How sayest thou, ye shall be made free? Jesus answered them, Verily, verily, I say to you, Whosoever committeth sin is the servant of sin, and the servant abideth not in the house forever, but the Son abideth ever. If the Son therefore shall make you free, ye shall be free indeed. I know that ye are Abraham's seed. Oh, I know you're Abraham's children. But ye seek to kill me, because my word hath no place in you. Because they saw Edom and they married into the Canaanite satanic seed line. But ye seek to kill me because my word hath no place in you. I speak that which I have seen with my father. And ye do that which ye have seen with your father. Woo. They answered and said unto him, Abraham is our father. Jesus saith unto them, If ye were Abraham's children, ye would do the works of Abraham. But now ye seek to kill me, a man that hath told you the truth, 
a man which have told you the truth, which I have heard of God, this did not Abraham. Abraham wouldn't do that. No, uh-uh. Ye, ye do the deeds of your father. Then said they to them, We be not born of fornication. We have one father, even God. Jesus said unto them, If God were your father, ye would love me. For I proceeded forth and came from God. Neither came I of myself, but he sent me. Why do ye not understand my speech? Even because ye cannot hear my word. Now remember, just a little bit before that, Jesus said he was telling the truth. Why do ye not understand my speech? Even because ye cannot hear my word. Ye are of your father, the devil. Esau, Edom who married into the satanic seed line, which churches absolutely hate. They will hide that truth, the, the, the satanic seed line, and who is really Israel. The two truths that the modern so-called church world will hide. They don't want you to know. They will hide it, and people will not get their shovel and dig into God's word. They won't do it. So they're going to be blindsided. And uh, blindsided, ladies, is kind of a football term. The quarterback uh, is, is dropping behind the two lines to throw the ball. And he's looking in one direction, but the enemy team is, the opposing team is coming from the other direction from his back, getting ready to knock him down and tackle him. But he doesn't see it. So he's getting ready to be, that's what they call being blindsided. Guys, you don't need to know that. But yeah, you know. So in John 8, 44, Jesus telling these group of people, Ye are of your father, the devil. And the lust of your father, ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning. Ooh, who was the murderer from the beginning? Uh, Cain, Cain and Abel. Hmm. Wow. Ye are of your father, the devil, and the lust of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. And because I tell you the truth, and because I tell you the truth, and because I tell you the truth, not a figure of speech, he's not calling them names, nah, 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 you're the children of the devil, nah, 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 no. And it's not a figure of speech. He's telling them, I tell you the truth. Ye believe me not. Which of you convinceth me of sin? And if I say the truth, why do you not believe me? He that is of God heareth God's words. Ye therefore hear them not because ye are not of God. Verse 48. Who's Jesus talking to here? Ha <laughs> ha Then answered the Jews and said unto him, Say we not well that thou art a Samaritan and hast a devil? How can Jesus be a Samaritan? He's, a, he's of the tribe of Judah. Well, he lived in Samaria, in Galilee. So they, they're calling him a Samaritan and hast a devil. Now, Samaria was the capital of Israel. And we're going to get to that. We're going to do, we're going to look into the, uh, who the Samaritans were. They were the strangers. But we haven't gotten there yet. I'm just laying the foundation here. I might have to do a part two here. So, then answered the Jews, who Jesus is talking to, and said unto him, Christ, Say we not well that thou art a Samaritan and hast a devil? 
Yeah, they're accusing Jesus of being possessed of a devil or being demonically possessed of a demon. Jesus answered, I have not a devil, but I honor my father, and ye do dishonor me. Now remember, if you don't have the son, you don't have the father that sent the son. I have not a devil, but I honor my father, and ye do dishonor me. And I seek not my own glory, but there is one that seeketh and judges. Verily, verily, I say unto you, if a man keep my sayings, keep my saying, he shall never see death. And he's not talking about physical death here. He's talking about spiritual death. Verse 52. Then said the Jews unto him, Now we know that thou hast the devil. Abraham is dead, and the prophets, and thou sayest, If a man keep my sayings, he shall never taste of death. Art thou greater than our father Abraham, which is dead, and the prophets are dead? Whom makest thou thyself? Wow. Jesus answered, If I honor myself, my honor is nothing. It is my father that honoreth me, of whom ye say he is your God. But ye have not known him, but I know him. And if I should say I know him not, I shall be a liar like unto you. But I know him and keep his sayings. Your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day, and he saw it and was glad. Then said the Jews unto him, Thou art not yet fifty years old, and hast thou seen Abraham? Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, before Abraham was, I am. Whoa. Then they took up stones to cast at him, but Jesus hid himself and went out of the temple, going through the midst of them, and so passed by. So they're getting ready to stone the Jesus, but he hid himself. I don't know how. Did he make himself invisible? I don't know. And went out of the temple, going through the midst of them, and so passed by. Now, what is this? In verse 58, Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, before Abraham was, I am. What's up with that? I am. All right, let's take a look at Exodus chapter 3. Uh, we're going to look at the I am. Book of Exodus, Moses. Now Moses, verse 1, Now Moses kept the flock of Jethro his father-in-law, the, the priest of Midian, and he led the flock to the backside of the desert and came to the mountain of God, even to Horeb. And the angel of the Lord, and I did an entire Bible study on the angel of the Lord, uh, a lot of times, maybe not always, but uh, when the angel of the Lord is mentioned, sometimes he talks as God in the first person. Which leads me to believe that this is Christ before in uh, before his human form. But uh, I got a Bible study on that. If you're interested, you know, angel of the Lord. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a flame of fire out of the midst of the bush. And he looked, and behold, the bush burned with fire, and the bush was not consumed. And Moses said, I will now turn aside and see this great sight why the bush is not burnt. And when the Lord saw that he turned aside to see, God called unto him out of the midst of the bush and said, Moses, Moses. And he said, Here am I. And he said, Draw not nigh hither, put off thy shoes from off thy feet, for the place wherein thou dwellest standest for the place wherein thou standest is holy ground. Moreover, he said, I am. I am the God of thy father, the God of Abraham, the God of Jacob. I'm sorry, the God of Isaac and the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look upon God. And the Lord said, I have surely seen the affliction of my people which are in Egypt, and have heard their cry by reason of their taskmasters, for I know their sorrows. And I am 
come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians and to bring them up out of the land unto a good land and a large, unto a land flowing with milk and honey, unto the land of the Canaanites and the Hittites and the Amorites and the Perizzites and the Hivites and the Jebusites. And how it's funny is churches will tell you that uh, these are not the satanic seed line, but God told Israel to go in to the land and kill them all. Isn't that funny? God says, go into the land and kill everything that breathes. Hmm. But God loves them. Oh, yeah, God loves them so much that he tells Israel to go into the land and kill them. Yeah, right. And we wonder why Christianity is dying. Because we have wolves behind the pulpit in the, in the so-called building called a church. Verse 9. Now, therefore, behold, the cry of the children of Israel is coming to me, and I have also seen the oppression wherewith the Egyptians oppress them. Come now, therefore, and I will send thee unto Pharaoh, that thou mayest bring forth my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. And uh, the Bible, to my knowledge, the Bible never says anything good about Egypt. Never, 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 never. And Moses said unto God, who am I that I should go unto Pharaoh, that I should bring forth the children of Israel out of Egypt? Oh, wait, did I read verse 10? All right, let's go to verse 9. Okay, now therefore, behold, the cry of the children of Israel has come unto me, and I have also seen the oppression wherewith the Egyptians oppressed them. Come now, therefore, and I will send thee, I will send thee, Moses, I will send thee unto Pharaoh, that thou, thou, Moses, mayest bring forth my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. And Moses said unto God, Who am I? Who am I that I should go unto Pharaoh, and that I should bring forth the children of Israel out of Egypt? And he, God, cert said, Certainly I will be with thee, and this shall be the token unto thee, that I have sent thee, when thou hast brought forth the people out of Egypt, ye shall serve God upon this mountain. And Moses said unto God, Now remember something. Egypt had a bunch of different so-called gods by many different names. Uh, they had Ra and Osiris and uh, Anubis. Uh, I'm just naming a couple out of my you know, off the top of my head. So, all right. So, um, all right. So, when thou hast brought forth the people out of Egypt, ye shall serve God upon this mountain. And Moses said unto God, verse 13, Behold, when I come unto the children of Israel, and shall say unto, me, uh, unto them, The God of your fathers hath sent me unto you. And they shall say to me, what is his name? Oh, well, wait a minute. Okay, so you're telling us the God of our fathers is, has sent you, Moses, to us. Uh, what's the name of this God? Uh, Ra, Osiris, Anubis, who? Well, what's his name? You know, what is his name? So Moses is saying, and they shall say to me, what is his name? Uh, what, am, what shall I say unto them? All right, God, they're going to ask me, what's your name? What am I going to tell them? Verse 14. And God said unto Moses, listen carefully. And God said unto Moses, I am. I am that I am. And he said, Thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, I am hath sent me unto you. I am hath sent me unto you. Huh. So, when, when Jesus said, uh, 
in John chapter 8. Let's see. In John chapter 8, verse 57, Then said the Jews unto him, Thou art not yet fifty years old, and hast thou seen Abraham? Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Before Abraham was, I am. You see, Jesus was telling them, He is I am of Exodus that was talking to Moses. That's why they wanted to take up stones and kill him. Oh, yeah. Um, is the picture starting, the, is the picture and the puzzle starting to come together? Absolutely. If you ask me, anyway. So, All right, I'll tell you what. I'm going to make this a part one. Um, you know, it's amazing. I think I'm going to be able to do an entire study in an hour and it ends up being two or three, but, uh, you know, hey, I don't want anybody saying, well, this chaplain Bob guy, he's just making stuff up. But if I wanted to prove to you about the satanic seed line thing, uh, that would be a, at least a 10-hour study, if not more. And by the way, I can show you verses in the Bible where uh, God told, well... He said, don't marry the Canaanites. Don't marry them. So if you want proof of all this stuff about a satanic sea line on the earth, you know, there's a reason God, Jesus is calling them children of the devil. He's not calling them names. He's, he's not, he's telling the truth. It's not a figure of speech. I mean, people don't, you know, they don't want to believe this stuff. And uh, what can I tell you? So, all right. Well, this is going to be part one of The Stranger. And indeed, Canaanites are strangers to the Lord, but they're not covenant strangers. So, all right. So, Strangers in the Bible, part one. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor. In Jesus' precious name. Amen.